What up, hookers? May almost stand scooch. How we doing today? Great. Thanks for asking. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about America's sweetheart, Mr. Kenneth Copeland. I, I, First, before we can get into Kenneth Copeland and uh, what kind of devil he is, we're going to start talking about Oral Roberts. Now, Oral Roberts is a pioneer in the prosperity preacher world. He is one of the very first TV evangelists and I'm probably directly responsible for the way Kenneth Copeland is. Man. Oral was such a cool kid that he founded Oral Roberts University and became super rich and famous, which he was probably super rich and famous first, and then he continued that while he taught other people to be so. Now we're going to cut to Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland, of course, is um, just a, a, a zombie in a skin suit, or as I like to think, a vampire. If you think about it long enough, uh, I'm right. Saddam's name was blood. This is my blood. This is the blood of God. That's right. I'm going to stay away from that. Why is he so interested in blood if he's not a vampire? How do you become a vampire? What happened to him? I'll tell you, Oral Roberts. Now, it's my belief that sometime in his career, Oral went to Europe or probably Transylvania and ran into Bram Stoker's Dracula. Then he brought his vampiric curse back to America in which he started infecting the public. One of which was Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland started out as a recording artist. Didn't know that, did you, babe? After that, he kind of got into the ministry and attended Oral Roberts University, where he, of course, became Oral Roberts' um, familiar and drove him around and flew him in his aeroplane. Now, I believe Kenneth Copeland was probably his, his familiar for many, many years, until about 2009, when Oral Roberts died, and Kenneth Copeland, and uh, it looks like a few others, absorbed his uh, vampirical power and uh, continued on his uh, wrath of bloodlust and death. I don't make this stuff up. If you didn't understand what I'm saying, I made a very professional and high quality diagram on Photoshop, and I'm going to show you this. This this is pretty much Oral Roberts to Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Copeland to the rest of the prosperity preachers who are old, but still somehow look very, very young. Uh, Kenneth Copeland is 86 years old. Joe Olstein is a 60-year-old man. Look at that guy. Look at him. That's insane. We're going to get off that, actually. We're not going to talk about him being a vampire. That's just hearsay, and I heard it and said it um, both. So... It doesn't really count. Now we're going to talk about how Kenneth Copeland, in reality, is just a demon in a skin suit. And it looks like his uh, skin suit's about to fall off. Oh, yeah. K-Dog, as I call him, is uh, is absolutely batshit crazy. He he is losing his mind. He is uh, obviously a professional mumble rapper. <laughs> I'm not a tongue talker, but even I know... That ain't right. What he does is every time he forgets what he's going to say, he goes into talking in tongues and until he has time to process what he's going to say next. Under which the Canadian office uh, is... Shigama. He is pretty much Joe Biden of the preacher world, except for... Except for Joe Biden hasn't figured out how to make it look like he knows what he's doing. Nash County, uh, uh, Edge, 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 excuse me, Edgecombe uh, County. Don't get into politics with me. I don't care about politics. I'm just making making an observation that the guy is a mess. Um, but anyway, we're gonna go back to Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland is worth seven hundred and eighty million dollars. He's pretty much a billionaire. He has used the church funds to buy planes and uh, a house, actually more than a house, it's a compound in Fort Worth, and uh, it's got an airport, his own private dock, probably got a bedroom in it. I don't know. I didn't do a lot of research. It's a big-ass house, and um, he uses the church to pay for it. The problem is he doesn't pay taxes on any of this stuff. He literally gets everything without any kind of explanation, completely tax-free. He likes even gloating about having things. You know, the thing is, like, because he tithes, he got all this money back from God, and you can too. So everybody looks at him, and he he like he like tells them, you know, I can heal you, or you know, you 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 buy this, or you you give this, and I'll give it back to you. 
um, that I can talk straight to God, that, that me talking in tongues is me communicating with God, you know, because, because I'm a prophet. I just heard the Lord say this, Jerry. You're not, just, you're, you're, you're not a prophet. And of course, his wife's in on it too. And his son-in-law is his hype man. Destroyer, you killer, you get out, you break your power, you get off this nation. I demand Amen. judgment on you. I demand, oh. I demand, I demand a vaccination to come immediately. Yes. And of course, it's all tax-free because, well, it's a church. Isn't that messed up? Speaking of Kenneth Copeland's hype man, who is this guy? I can't find shit about him. I can't find shit about Kenneth Copeland, to be honest. All I do know is Kenneth Copeland, being a man of God he is, has been divorced and is on his third marriage. That is not supposed to be, you know, Christian. Did he give his wives to the church and got back one tenfold? Is that what's going on? Did he get the super wife? She is uh, extremely devoted to him. She even talks about how we can control the weather. And I looked out the window, and that tornado came down just like this, down toward the ground. And Ken said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You get back up there. And that tornado went, woo, 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 woo. And that's right. He can control the weather. He can also blow away COVID. I blow the wind of God. On you. On you. And he can heal you from a wheelchair. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, he can throw you down. Same thing. I don't even know. I don't know what else to say about these guys other than they're just crooks. They're, I mean, and you know it. You know it. Even if you follow Kenneth Copeland, especially if you're giving him money, you got to know. You got to know that that's, that ain't right. You know, I mean, I can understand how how you fall for this if you need if you need you're in need but it's the people that are in need that are giving up everything they do have for nothing just to make another guy rich to give him an airport to give him 780 million dollars you have nothing to show for that you think you're winning god's favor i'm i'm not going to get into religion but i'm going to say you know 100% positive that you in fact are not winning god's favor by giving money to Kenneth Copeland. I don't think so. I'm, I'm positive. Now, as much trash as I talk about Kenneth Copeland, I don't mean to talk trash about the people that are donating to him or the people that, that need some help, that need something. It's really easy to give in to something that, you know, you, you see on TV, that you see every day over and over and over and over. And you eventually, you eventually just give in and try anything, you know, just, just so you can have some kind of help. It's hard right now. It's hard. It's hard to live on one income. It's hard to live on two incomes. It, you, you go to the store for milk and cereal. You come back, you spent $300 and you have a quart of milk and you forgot your cereal. That's life. That's how it is. And so he tries to make you think that if you would just give everything you have to the ministry, that, that it'll stop being like that and you'll eventually prosper or immediately prosper. I, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the fear of what are we going to do? I'm getting laid off at work. Hey, your job's not your source. Mm -hmm. If it is, you're in trouble. Whatever you do right now, don't you stop tithing. It's sad that any of us have to come to the point where that's an option. Um, and it's not just Kenneth Copeland. It's, it's also his uh, four minions. Joel Osteen, for example, is more of a motivational speaker. He has like, he has like the gateway drug to prosperity preaching. Even if you're not religious, you can get into what Joel Osteen's saying because it's more or less just telling you how awesome you are and, and making you feel good about yourself. You're not worthy. You're not good enough. You don't deserve to be happy. And then, you know, he softens the blow for you to get into these other prosperity preachers. Lord, help me. Would you like to give to the Jesus and Nath of the Evangelistic Association? How many lies do you think you believe? Kenneth Copeland is just one of the many basically, that, that enjoy um, being rich on others' expenses. Prosperity preaching just keeps coming. It is the most lucrative job in the world, no doubt. But, you know, we keep feeding it. It's going to keep growing. That's all it is. I guess the moral of the story is just give me $10. And uh, 
Guys, uh, remember to like and subscribe. And if you didn't like it, go ahead and subscribe because I'm a pretty cool guy. And always remember, don't hate each other. Hate yourself. Peace. Get out of here now!